Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed other suddenly also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore, therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be this to this house. <clears throat> and if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they gave. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth unto us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in that city for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works had been done in there, in Sodom, which hath been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you heareth me. He that despiseth you despiseth me. He that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babies. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, no man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto the disciples, and said, Prevently, Blessed are their eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto them, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound him up in 
his runes, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own feast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out their pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto them, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Uh, Brother Rob, would you mind praying for us? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to gather today. Uh, fill Brother Josh with your spirit to uh, preach your word and expound on it. And let us be edified by it. Lord, we love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Behold, I send you. Behold, I send you. There in verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you. Luke chapter 10 is a very full chapter. I love that account of Mary and Martha at the end. Martha cumbered about with her busyness, moving about, doing things, getting active in the ministry. And Jesus simply saying to her, Mary hath chosen that good part, sitting at my feet. You could preach that for days. Uh, this, this chapter, I love it, but really what I want to focus on is the first few verses there. And that phrase, behold, I send you. Behold, I send you. Do we believe this today? Do we believe that when we go out and we do our daily grind, we go out and we serve our families and we help our families and we do our jobs within the role of that context, when we go out and we go to our workplace, when we go out and we're at the grocery store, whatever we do, do we believe that it's God that sent us? Behold, I sent you. Turn, if you would, keep your finger in Luke chapter 10 and go to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 23, it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And we experienced this so much yesterday as we traveled about and we did our thing and we served, whether it was his way being Christ or, or his way being mine, it seemed like everywhere we went with those good intentions and with that right desire, God was ordering our steps. That's the walk of faith. Psalm 139 there in verse 1, the Bible says, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. God knows you. God, God searches you and, and, and there's nothing that's not revealed unto Him. Verse 2 says, Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. Understand it's my thought afar off. Sitting down, rising up. Moving forward, moving back. God understands the very thoughts of your head. The very thoughts of your heart. As we continue down, Thou compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. God is not confused or taken aback in your ways when he sees them come out. He compasses the path. He's, he's surrounding the very paths that, that you walk down. Even when you're lying down, God encamps around about those that fear him. So you can see how as you're walking this path, God would have you covered, whether you choose to go forward, to the left, or to the right. If he's compassing your path, you're in his control. Verse 4 says, For there is not a word in my tongue, but, O Lord, Thou knowest it all together, even before you say it. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid Thy hand upon me. That's comforting. Before and behind, God has His hand upon you. Such knowledge, and think about this for a moment, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. When you really try to grasp the power of God, you really try to grasp the presence of God. He's everywhere. He's in everything. 
through you, in all, in you. God is just all over the place. There's nothing hidden from him. That knowledge is too wonderful for me. We live in a world where if we turn a corner, we lose an entire room. We live in a world where we, 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 we simply do not know what's behind us even. The knowledge and, and the fact that God knows everything. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go, verse 7, from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Those thoughts are too wonderful for me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike unto thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. That last verse talks about God possessing the very reins of you. This is one of those verses I just, I just love to hear this chapter because it talks about God is just presence is everywhere. You're not getting away from God. You try to flee to hell, God will be there. You try to run away unto heaven and God will be there. You try to hide yourself in the darkness and it's just light unto him. He's not going to be tricked. He's not going to be duped. God's always there. God always sees you. His presence is around you. If you're doing wrong, that's not very comforting. But if you're doing right, that's the most comforting thing in the world. The Bible says in verse 17 or verse 13, "Thou hast possessed my reins." You know what reins are? That's how that's how you hold a horse. That's how you steer a horse. That, 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 that's the rope that goes around, connects to the bridle, and moves the horse whithersoever he goeth, wherever the governor listeth. That's where that ship is turned like a little helm. And God has hold of the reins. God has taken the steering wheel of my life as I walk, as I move, as I go about my ways. God is the one ultimately that has complete possession of the reins. And this is one thing that is, again, too high for me. And this is something, again, if you read in verse 13, it says, Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. This has been always the case. God in control of things. And like I said, if you're living righteously, this is good, because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So God is going to possess your reins, and whether you go about in His way or in His way, you are going in a path that God has control over and he will lead you and guide you and take you wherever he wants you to. If you're, if you're doing right, you'll be blessed. If you're doing wrong, though, the same applies. God has control of your very reins and he will take you to where you will stumble. He will take you to where you will fall. He will lead you in a path that is not preferable, that is not enjoyable. God is in control and God covers and God safely steers the believer that's in his way, that's in his path, that's in the good way. Turn to Psalm chapter 37. Psalm chapter 37. Now as God leads us about, our responsibility is to follow him, believe him, trust him, and take each and every step with delight. Psalm chapter 37 in verse 3. As we all often already read in Psalm chapter 37, verse 23, it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And we ought to delight in the path that God has before us. Psalm 37, in verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. Verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Verse 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 7, Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself. For not thyself. And God here, he's explaining to us the walk that a Christian has. Obviously, he brings it around and says, Hey, you are good steps. The good man walking is walking ordered. He is safely being steered. He is being guided appropriately to good things, to blessings, to riches, to honor, to elevation, to God lifting and exalting 
uh, people up. That's what the good man's fate is. And we're to do it in trusting, obeying God. We're to take joy in it, this psalm says. We're to have faith to commit to God's leading in our life. And we're to rest and wait as he moves us forward. Go back to Luke chapter 10, if you would. Luke chapter 10. And in Luke chapter 10, we find 70 of his disciples about to embark on a journey. They're about to take steps in his way. His way, like I said, it, it's either interpreted as, as Jesus' way, he delighteth in his way, or it's interpreted as my way, he delighteth in my way. But the, the, the truth is, is that with ordered steps, those two are one and the same. Whether I'm, I'm walking and I'm just going to my job, or whether I'm walking and I'm going specifically to church, or to a soul winning event, or to a preaching event, or, or walking in things that God has guided me to. No matter what it is, if I'm a good man, if I'm doing good things, if I have good intentions, He is driving, He's driving me. He's got the reins, He's got the steering wheel. God is in control of what's ahead of me. We need to delight in the way with ordered steps. Luke chapter 3 says, go your ways, okay? So when Jesus called them, his instruction to them was to go your ways. It seems like he's giving complete control and power to them. They can go where they will. They can go wherever they desire to. They can take the high road. They can take the low road. They can go forward. They can go backward. Go your ways. And I love this. Behold, I send you. I send you forth as lambs among wolves, okay? So here, they're being encouraged to go their way. Go your way. Choose your path. Do your thing. And if you're a good man, it becomes God's plan. It becomes God's way. It becomes God's path. This is the thing. When you're a good man, you are going on ordered steps. You are following in the path that he will form before you even as you take that next step of faith. Even as happened this weekend, were we going our way or are we going the Lord's way when we decide, hey, we're going to go to a preaching conference. We're going to go and we're going to do some soul winning. We're going to go and do some fellowship. Well, that was a desire of our hearts. It was our way. We, we love doing those things. So we went, but it was also God's way. God wants us to get involved in these things. He wants us to be preached to, to be edified and encouraged, have good fellowship, go soul winning and do all these right things. So as we walked in his way and delighted in that, he ordered our steps along the way. You want to do good things? If our desire is to do good things, you're in good hands as God takes hold of the reins and guides you. And we found this each step of the way. A little bit of the testimony of this weekend, it, it started very soon. We ran a little bit late. And normally you'd be like, oh no, we're late. This is not going to be any good. But with, with the eyes of faith, you can say and proclaim and know that this is simply another opportunity for God to order our steps. Right from the time that we were a little bit late and made the turn from the 402 to the 40, from the 401 to the 402, just just in the nick of time because we had a call that said, there's traffic here, we're stuck here, and we made that turn at the exact moment. If we weren't late, that, that decision time wouldn't have happened. We would have ran right into the mess. When we got boots on the ground and we, we had heard the preaching and we were going to go soul winning, we decided that we were going to take the scenic road. I saw two options. One was to go up the side of an escarpment. The other one was to take the highway. We took what we called the scenic road. And once you know it, we, we drove upon a car accident. And we were immediately given the opportunity to bust out of the car and try to give healing to these people and encouragement to these people and just say, hey, can we pray for you? Can we try to help you through this before the ambulance showed up? We thought at that time, hey, there wasn't much of an opportunity to preach the gospel to anybody here. So what are we going to do? Well, we all piled back in the car. Let's get down and get to our lunch. We're late anyways. And we look over and we see a young boy sitting there on his bike, just waiting there, looking at the action. Well, we couldn't, we couldn't help it. Brother Shane jumps out. He goes across the road. And within a few minutes, we saw that smile come across his face. He's sitting down, kind of wondering and hearing the things. And then it was just like, ding. The light went off and we could see it from afar and this young boy got saved. All because we had ordered steps from God. We decided, hey, it was my decision. You know, I just said, let's take the scenic route. And I was just turning my map. I was going in my way or was I going in his way? It didn't matter because whichever way we chose, God ordered our steps and led us to where we needed to be. 
Even when we got to the soul winning event and we were on the ground and we were looking at the maps and we were ready to go, they say, okay, here's one area, here's another area, here's another area. And I said, well, we're Canadians, so we're more comfortable in the north. And we took the north side. Little did I know that that ended up being the most receptive area of the entire of the group. Literally, uh, <clears throat> Brother Shane and Miss Amanda, they did not even leave the corner. You were there as well. You didn't even leave the corner. You stood there and you just witnessed the people as they walked by. You could not get away from the fact that God ordered not only your steps, but these folks' steps as they came across your path to hear your gospel. Myself and Brother John, we, we walked one row of houses, and by the time we were done, there were nine salvations within two hours. I couldn't believe it. We get to a door, and he's getting to the point where he's starting to uh, do the introduction. Hi, my name's John. This is Josh. We came all the way from Canada to ask you this one question. If you die today, are you certain you'd go to heaven? And then I would jump in, and I'd give the gospel to him. And this man, he stood at the door, leaning against the door, just dumbfounded, and he said, I've been teaching John 3.16 to my children. I've been trying to get them to memorize John 3.16. And as I started to preach with them and started to work with them, I bring the illustration of a father and a son into the play. And now I'm working with the kids and I'm telling them, look, if you are good to your daddy, your daddy's going to bless you. He's going to love you. He's going to give you more presents. But if you're wrong to your daddy, and now daddy's liking this, right? He's liking hearing this. He's like, listen up to listen to this, listen to this, encouraging his children to listen. And before long, they all heard the gospel, made strong professions of its faith alone. He's going to believe in Jesus, who's God. Believe in Jesus, who's God. That's what the young child could say. And, and, a, and a tear came to my eye as I said, if you guys want to be saved today, I'm going to pray for you and then just put your hand on my Bible. And the whole family, four of them, put their hands one on top of another on my Bible and prayed for salvation today. As they thanked me for coming. I'm just like, what in the world? And the next house was the exact same thing. A father comes out and he's like, I've been meaning to do more good things so that I can go to heaven. I believed in Jesus, but I haven't done enough good things. And so I start to explain to him that those are contradicting ideas, that it's faith alone. Your good works are not anything to do with it. And once you know, the door squeaks open and one of his teenage sons comes out. And then he looks in and says, hey, you too, and calls the other teenage son out. And it was the same thing. All three of them placed their hands on my Bible and called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And it was, just, it was just God ordering our steps. It was just God leading us. We didn't have some, some, you know, go down this road, take the north path. There wasn't any kind of like God speaking in audible voice. We just simply followed our faith and one step after another after another just made decisions to go left or to go right, to go backwards, to go forward. It did not matter because we were good men and our steps were ordered by the Lord. We were just trying to please God. We were just trying to do what was right and he gave us every opportunity to do the same, just laid it out for us. I have never had a more receptive time of soul winning, even when I was in Guyana. It was such a blessing. Even as we're coming home, we're, we're, we're tired. We, we've, we've stayed an extra couple hours longer than we had even, even thought we would. Fellowship is one of those things in Baptist Church. It's like, all right, see you later. And then 10 minutes later, all right, see you later. I got to go. And then 10 minutes later, all right, I'm really going to go now. And this just kept happening and happening and happening. We couldn't get away. The fellowship was so good. And then once you know, we're flying down the highway. We're finally starting to make some tracks. We're starting to, we're starting to put some dust behind me. And Brother Shane, for no reason at all, just turns off the highway. And he's like, I don't even know what happened. Why did I make that turn? Why did I do that? And we make this detour that only lasted a few seconds, maybe a minute and a half or so. By the time we got back on the highway, it was simply go over the bridge and get back on. He's like, what in the world? But he looks back into the car and says, we're going to find out why God did that. We're going to find out why I messed up that way and why I went off on the wrong side of the road. God's going to show us. And once you know, we arrive at the, the dinner place. We arrive at the golden crowd. We sit down. We're eating. We're enjoying that fellowship time. The place was a mess. We couldn't find a seat. We had to sit on two different tables. It was just it was just people everywhere. And then suddenly it was just like Moses parting the Red Sea. The server just I don't know what happened. Everyone left. Everything got clean. We look over and suddenly she's just free for five minutes to hear the gospel. She was swamped. She was getting getting just rammed by servers. Bring and drinks, just doing everything she could to keep up, and then it was just like, it's clear, it's clean. And that minute and a half opened the window to where we could 
get enough time to get the gospel into her so she could hear it, receive it, just like this. You know, one of those rapid fire when people are like, I got five minutes to hear the gospel, and you just go through it. And they're just receptive and ready. They aren't even thinking on these things. And she prays and receives the Lord as Savior. And there was more revelation even from that experience that we can talk about later. It was simply a case where we trusted God enough to go in His way. Sometimes it was my way. Sometimes it was someone else's way. Just wherever way we went, God ordered our steps because we had a goodness in our heart and we desired to do those things that were pleasing in His sight. That's faith. Sometimes you have no idea why you find yourself in a situation. But if you trust God, even when you seem to have stumbled, you seem to have taken a wrong turn, you seem to have fallen, you seem to have made a wrong decision, if you got a head on your swivel, remember the Bible said that the path that you walk, God is compassing. If you're always looking around you, always aware of your surroundings, always prepared to do what God wants, He has brought you to that position by your reins and put you there for a specific thing. And that's the faith walk. That's what we need to be more aware of. We need to be soul conscious. We need to be spiritually conscious of what's going on in our life. So that even when I'm just doing something simple like going to work, I can believe and trust that God has brought me to something whereby I can do something to the glory of God the Father and something that is profitable unto the kingdom. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Does anyone believe that today? I mean, in all thy ways acknowledge him. Whether I'm going to the grocery store, I'm going to a doctor's appointment, going to the park, in all thy ways, left, right, up, down, backwards, forwards, wherever I'm going, if I'm acknowledging him, he shall direct thy paths. That's the promise. And we do this all the time when we go to a special event. When we're at Guyana, there's no schedule. We're going and we're doing our own thing. We're going from this place to that place. Basically from lunch to lunch. That's what Baptists do. We have second lunch, right? So we just go from one to the next. But in the way, if I'm trusting God, acknowledging Him, He's directing thy path. But what can we do with our just daily grind? I mean, all of us, you know, have jobs. All of us have duties. We have chores. We have errands. We have things that we're doing. Can we not trust God in these? Can we not acknowledge Him and let Him direct our paths? That's what that promise means. Trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him. He shall direct thy paths. The more we execute that faith, the more we're trusting in God in those circumstances and in those times, the more we give Him opportunities to grab those reins and lead us. The more we're just saying, God, I don't even know what happened. I don't know why I'm in this situation. This is such a mess. God, what do you have for me here? He grabs a hold. He gives you his purpose and reveals his plan unto you. And it'll happen time and time and time and time again. Let's take that mentality out of the mission field and just plunge it into our everyday. Then it's not just this, oh, I'm the Christian now, and then now I'm the, 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 the auto guy. Now, now I'm a Christian, and now I'm a dad. Now I'm a Christian. Bring that mentality, the trusting of God and leaning on His plans into your everyday life. And that is Christianity. That is walking in the faith of our fathers. That is the faith of Abraham that stepped out and said, I'm just going to go to a land and I have no idea where it's going. That is what God wants for us. God is looking for good men. God is looking for good women to guide. God is just waiting for people that want to do right, that have a heart that wants to do right, that wants to serve God, and he's just waiting for them to say, Lord, whatever you want, and then he will guide you. He will direct your path. He will take you step by step by step by step of faith through this life, and each one of them, you'll go, wow, God brought me here for this. Whoa, God did this in my life. Whoa, God, how did you put that person here? And then the guy that was teaching John 3.16 to his children just a few hours before is simply every moment of your life and you're just dumbfounded by the fact that God has done such a thing in your path as you walk with him. But as in many things, verse 2 comes to light. The Bible says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest, okay? 
And this is a prayer that every one of us can make for others if we're already in the fight, if we're already in the battle, if we're already ones being led by the Spirit and we're trying to please God and we're being good men that have ordered steps before God and we're always executing our faith. Right? We can pray that others would get involved in that same thing. But I think more often than not, we need to take that same concept and just pray for ourselves. Because like I said, too often, I go and I'm the engineer Josh, and then I go and then I'm the Christian Josh, and I go and I'm the engineer, and I just have this kind of switch that I keep flicking every time. I, okay, now I'm a dad, okay, now I'm a Christian, okay, now I'm soul winner, now I'm a guy crunching numbers, okay? And I just have this switch that always goes on back and forth and back and forth. And this is why the laborers are few. It's not just that there's not enough people getting involved in soul winning. It's that there's not enough soul winners that are getting involved in the Christian life, which is a Faith, always trusting, always in all thy ways, acknowledging him, being directed along your path. We are short of those, and every one of us is short of that. Nobody's going to stand here and say, I'm just an awesome Christian all the time, walking by faith in every aspect of my life. No, I think all of us, in certain ways, have a switch, right? We're going to flick our switch, and now I'm this guy. I'm going to flick a switch, and now I'm the Christian. I'm going to flick a switch, and now I'm a sports star. I'm going to flip the switch, and now I'm a Christian. I'm going to flip the switch, and we just do that back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth all day. And this is why the laborers are few, because the laborer is somebody that all the time is ready to harvest, all the time is ready to do his will, all the time is ready to trust and by faith say, God, direct my paths and take the steps of a good man by faith so that he can leave. Amen. There are few that want to jump in by faith, and the, often the reason is because we fear. Often we think it would, it would be something fearful for God to get involved in this area of my life. It would be something terrifying for God to get involved in my job, to be, to be the all-the-time soul winner, to be leading people to Christ in my family, amongst my friends. What will people think? That might be embarrassing if somebody rejects me at work. I, I, might, I might ostracize myself among my friends. I might embarrass myself to my parents, my grandparents. Often fear will take hold of us, but as we learned on this trip, we can apply to our lives that even when you stumble, God is ready to use that situation for his will. He's got the reins and he's ready to lead you on to the next step in your life. So don't fear, move forward. Behold, I send you. Behold, I send you. That's what he says in verse 3. Behold, I send you. Yeah, go your ways. Yeah, do your thing. You got a job. You got a family. You got you to go make a paycheck. You got to go get groceries. You got to do all of these mundane things. Go your way. Okay, that's fine. Behold, I send you. Okay, isn't that such a, a, a weird mentality sometimes for us to think? But we should try that when we go to open our door. And I'm just going to go to the grocery store and pick up some milk. Okay, I'm going my way. God's sending me. Right? God's not just sending you when you step on a plane and fly halfway across the world and then preach the gospel to a bunch of people for a week. God's also sending you when you just go to the library to rent a book. God's also sending you when you go to the store to pick up some groceries. God's sending you when you go and you take your child to the park. God's sending you in each one of these positions, in each one of these areas of your life. We need to bring God and accept God and welcome God into all these avenues in our life so that we can be a perfect Christian as Job was. Perfect, complete, full, just all the time praying, all the time ministering, all the time doing the will of God and letting him direct your paths. Go your ways. Behold, I send you, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. And that's the thing is we go out as the weak ones. We go out as the vulnerable ones. We go out as the ones that, yeah, we, we have realistic fears. A lamb has a realistic fear when he steps in a pen of wolves, of course. But who sends them? God sends them. God sends them. God provides what is needed to get through it. I love that saying, where God guides, God provides. Where God guides, God provides. Behold, I send you. Yeah, you're vulnerable. Yeah, you're weak. Yeah, you can't even do this on your own. You're going to get torn to shreds. But don't fear. I sent you. That's what God says to us. In verse 4, it says, Carry neither purse nor script nor shoes, and salute no man. By the way, verse 5, And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be unto this house. You know what's happening here? They went out with nothing. They went out as sheep. They were vulnerable in amongst wolves. And God says, I'll give you the money. Don't take it with you. I'll give you the lodging. You don't need that. And God is always providing in that way. Verse 7 says, And in the same house remain, 
eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. He's providing food here. Every step the disciples make by faith, he says, go your ways. Figure out where you want to go. Map it out. You know, pick your spot. Say where you, you take a detour if you'd like. I sent you. I sent you. And as I sent you, you got the money. You got the logic. You got the food. And this is faith. You got to trust God that he provides it. Verse 9 says, not only does he provide the money, the lodging, the food, the resources, the provision. Verse 9 says, he also provides the sick. And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. God also provides as you go, not only the provision, he provides the people, doesn't he? How often do you go and you're just going to do one thing and then you find yourself with a sick, a sin sick person in front of you that's ready to be saved, that's ready to have the soul winner lead them in the gospel presentation, that's ready, white unto harvest, and that's what God is promising here. He says, behold, go your ways, do your thing, trust in the Lord, don't lean on your own understanding, acknowledge me. Go, I'll direct your path. You're a good man. You're doing good. You're doing right. You want to do right. You have the right motives, right desire. Delight in that way. I will order your steps. You got the money. You got the lodging. You got the food. And now here you got the sick. You got the sinner. You got the lost soul ready to be saved. And that can be all the time, every time. And what do you do when you get to them? You say, hey, the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. Now is the day of salvation. Today is your opportunity to receive of Christ. The thing is that some will want to receive this. When you get to these opportunities, these divine appointments, not every one of them is just low-hanging fruit. The reality is, is that quite often we're giving divine appointments and we ignore them because we're often just looking for the easy one, the low-hanging fruit. And those are blessings. I mean, what a blessing to arrive at a house where John 3.16 is already being preached. I just need to put all the put all of the things together. Just line everything up and tell them, hey, this is what you got to believe and this is what you got to trust and then go. And this is what John 3.16 is trying to teach you. And I just needed to basically take that low-hanging fruit and pluck it. But the reality is, is that Quite often when we go about our ways, we are given these same divine appointments. We're giving the ordered steps. God has the reins. And he takes us to circumstances and we may look at somebody that was a divine appointment. Maybe we're just soul warning this time. Maybe we're just trying to trying to plant a seed or trying to send them off to the next soul winner. But we avoid them because, oh, that person doesn't look receptive. Oh, they look nasty. Oh, oh, they look grumpy. I could never do that. Oh, this, this situation isn't very comfortable. And we often limit God and what he can do in our lives by, by fear and purposely avoiding certain situations where God could take and get glory unto himself. Verse 10 says, But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth unto us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. See, no matter what the situation, or no matter what is received, the message was the same. The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. The opportunity to be saved has come nigh unto you. The preaching of the cross has is, is come nigh unto you. And whether they receive it or whether they don't, it doesn't seem to give an indication that one was a divine appointment and the other one wasn't. It's needful to get people saved and to bring them into the fold through salvation by grace through faith. It's also needful to just warn some people of the wrath to come so that when they stand before God, they will be without excuse. And we need to get involved in both aspects of it. We need to trust that God is ordering our steps even to situations that seem completely unreceptive. We need to take advantage of that to preach the same truth. And yeah, if we need to kick up the dust of our feet and carry on, great. But the same message was proclaimed and both acts are done by faith verse 16 says he that heareth you heareth me he that despiseth you despiseth me and he that despiseth me despises him also that sent me Christ is simply saying hey if they're going to hear you yeah, they'll hear me as well if they're going to despise you it's because they despise me and they despise the father that sent me Regardless, it was Christ that sent you. Behold, I send you, he said at the beginning of this. Behold, I send you as sheep among wolves. You're vulnerable. You can't handle this, but I sent you to each situation. And if you're doing it with the right heart and the right motives, your steps are ordered. These things are planned. These things are purposed before you. Don't doubt that. 
So whether we're going soul winning or we're going to church, he ordered your path today. Whether we're going to work or we're going to run errands or we're just doing chores, he ordered your path today if you're a good man, if you're trusting him, if you have faith enough to believe that. Be sensitive, people. We need to be sensitive to these things. We need to pray and we need to watch. And just as we did on this trip, we need to figure out why things are happening a certain way and wait for God to just put on that light and reveal the fact, oh man, no wonder I was late for work today because I got to such a situation as this. This guy wasn't saved, but I, I gave him a good, strong, biblical warning for the judgment to come. Maybe someone else will be saved for it. Or you're late for work and you turn the wrong way and you're, you're off the beaten path. Next thing you know, you're in a situation where somebody is just low-hanging fruit, ready to receive the gospel, ready to believe. But it's our responsibility to be good men going with ordered steps by God, being sensitive, praying, watching and figuring out why circumstances have happened because God is looking to guide every Christian in this way all the time. And when we jump on board with this plan for God, when we're ready to be laborers, when we're ready to be part of the harvest, when we're ready to just go our ways, do our thing, follow in our, in our own daily grind, Behold, I send you. Behold, I send you is the promise that God made. And when we get on board with that, do you know what Jesus does? Jesus rejoices. Verse 21 says, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. You notice how all this was in God's sight and God's planning and God's timing? He saw what he needed to be done. And what did he do? He revealed these things unto babes. He revealed these things unto the new believer that received him. He received these things unto somebody that was maybe doubting and searching. He revealed them unto, not the wise, not the prudent. Where's the wise? Where's the prudent? Where's the scribe? These things are reserved for those that simply want to trust and obey God. And most of them end up being babes in Christ, unfortunately. Christians tend to get old and crusty and then stop wanting to follow God by faith. Isn't faith easy when you first get saved? Isn't it easy yeah. to trust God and believe God and, and, and just say, yeah, I, I trust I think I'm, I'm going to heaven and it's all by faith. Next thing you know, you're walking by faith. Everything looks different in your sight. It's like every step you make, God is just, man, he put that in my path. He put that in my path. You start to reminisce about everything that went on in your life leading up to your salvation. You're just like, God was all over these things. But then a year passes and two years pass, and next thing you know you're just a crusty old Christian you're wise now you know a lot of things you're prudent you know a lot of things you're a scribe you've got the word of God figured out even memorized but God's not revealing these things unto you you can get back to that faith walk but it comes from trusting him it comes from bringing him into all aspects of your life and by faith walking after him verse 23 says not only we saw he reveals these things unto babes but here's us and he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, okay? Now this is what believers can have. This is what if you've been saved for a while, hey, maybe you've backslidden a little bit and now you're, now you're just a crusty old Christian. You know, God's not working in your life the same. Things aren't just, just flying, you know. Things aren't, things aren't like faith, you know, just big acts of faith all the time. But you can get back to where the disciples are. Jesus turns and privately says unto them, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye have which ye hear, and have not heard them. The the scenarios that happened this past weekend, I mean I hope I forget these things. I hope they pass and I just press on to the next things. But the things that have happened, you know that there's there's theologians, you know that there's Baptist preachers in their big seminaries. You know there's all these guys, that, these prophets, these kings that desire to see the kind of things that we see when we go soaring like that. When God orders your steps, when God gets a hold of your paths and then designs a certain situation just for it, we call it divine appointments. So many people desire to see those things. I desire to see those things. But if we let ourselves get crusty, if we let ourselves get bitter, if we let ourselves get, get tired and, and get out of the fight, get out of the race, get out of taking those steps of faith. And do you know what happens? Then we don't see those things which kings desire to see. We don't see those things which prophets desire to see. see and we don't hear those things which they also want to hear. But... If we're trusting, obeying, 
God is ready to bless your eyes. God is ready to bless your ears. God is ready to bless your heart and to take you step of faith by step of faith by step of faith through this Christian walk. And he will do it because he loves you. And he will do it because that's his purpose for you. The only reason he got us saved was so that we could take the gospel message and by faith bring it forward unto others. Behold, I send you, he said. Behold, I send you. And here he's starting to explain to his disciples in the early pages of Luke that, hey, you don't need to bring a purse. You don't need to bring a script. You don't need to bring shoes. You don't need to plan for these things. You don't need to prepare food. You don't need shelter. You don't need anything because I will prepare your way. I will guide your path. All you have to do is go your ways. Just go your ways. Just walk your ways. And behold, as I have sent you, behold, I will align your steps. Behold, I will order your path. Behold, trust in the Lord. Trust in me, not on your own understanding. Acknowledge me, and I'll direct your path to the next miracle, to the next great salvation story, to the next great healing, to the next great revelation, to the next passage of Scripture that just blesses your heart, to the next relationship. Everything in your life becomes this great walk of faith and trust in God. And you can have that. Make your way Christ's way. But regardless, you're going your way, you're going his way, it becomes one and the same because he is ordering it if you're a good man with a good heart. Let's be good men, good women with good hearts and seek after God in order that he could show us the next step and the next step and the next step. And do what he's doing all along the way? He's ordering those steps. He's walking about you. He's around you, leading you to the next person, leading you to the next situation, leading you to the next blessing, leading you to the next problem. But all of it is a part of his plan because he's got the reins, he's taken the wheel, and he is ready to do in your life these things. Just trust and obey.